uh, thanks Gao. Um, in Microsoft Research Asia, I, I have been leading uh, a team of researchers working on uh, web search. And uh, in, the next, uh, in the last couple of years, one of the effort my team has been trying to do is to see if we can actually create some of the potential disruption or even potentially change the current search paradigm. And uh, it's actually very difficult. You know, people already get used to the current search engine. So in my talk next, I'm going to share with you some of the thoughts and also the early thinking, high level direction that um, the team here, including the people in Bing team, has been thinking about in the next decade, what direction potentially we can look into to really fundamentally change how people interact with search engine. So I want to start with a few high-level trends, which I think are very important currently uh, in the search area. I think the first trend is about the, the switch or the movement away from simply just focus, focusing, organizing all the information on the web, and really toward the focus on users in terms of what they are looking for and what their information need. And uh, we know that current search engine has started with a mission to organize all the information in the world. This is a very powerful idea and uh, also lead to a very successful company. But uh, we believe this actually, this idea, also comes with some of the weakness. Because as we all know that today, the web continues to grow very quickly. And, uh, but in our search engine, we start to notice that information needs space, or the user's query, or the number of page actually has the chance to appear in the search result. It's actually, compared to the entire web, is decreasing very, very dramatically and quickly. So now it's almost just a single digit percentage of the, the entire web will have a chance to show up in the user search result. Think about the web, the search engine, constantly crawling the web, understanding the content, building the index, and serve. But uh, almost more than 95%, or maybe in the future, in the next five years, will be 99% of those efforts, those computing, those processing, is actually not very effective in terms of really helping user. So we want to think if we can actually better leverage the 99% of computing power to really mining the web, organizing information, really directly targeting users' information need. So later on, I'm, I'm going to show you how this direction is actually leading some of the new research project in Microsoft. And the second, once you start to turn your angle from the document space, from all the document, all the web page you want to organize to query space or information need space, you start to ask a question. Can you understand user's intent better? Currently, search engine only understand keywords and take those keywords and trying to match which document should be ranked on top. And they don't actually understand the intent behind the query deeply enough. So the first thing we want to actually move from keyword matching to intent understanding. And the second, given that we are going to have a more processing power, or maybe allocate more processing power to understand the web, to extract the semantic, extract the knowledge, extract the data, the, the entity from the web page. We can potentially organize the web according to a predefined list of query, or even a predefined discovered information need space. And we call this knowledge base. And uh, we want to actually be able to present user no longer just with 10 links in the search result. We want to bring more semantic, more structured data, and then, then really help people to complete their task, or even you know, to take action, make a decision. And in order to do that, we actually need to build a more powerful advanced indexing structure, which actually understands semantics in the query, understand the semantic in the document and do a very efficient matching. And also using 
a model similar to dialog model to understand, to guide user to gradually for the search engine to really know what user is actually trying to accomplish. And then can bring the user to the page that can help them to really finish what they are trying to do. Instead of just give them a whole bunch of URL and then leave the job for them to figure out whether or not those page can then useful information for them. And the next trend beyond all the previous three or uh, four is really the web. Now we are actually seeing the web is moving from the past decade as a platform to publishing information, publishing content. Now web is becoming a platform for programming, for writing a lot of application, writing a lot of web services, which can actually, um, now we actually don't see this uh, completely uh, happen yet, but we believe it's very, very possible that in the near future, we are going to see a lot, lot of micro vertical app, different from today's, you know, the big, you know, vertical search or the application, you know, like you see today. We are going to see a lot of huge number of micro vertical app focusing on all different kind of information need and help people to accomplish. And that, that app can be implemented by one or two developer. And it's actually this idea lead to the next trend. It's this emer emergence of cloud platform. It's going to provide developer the resource they need, the infrastructure they need, the data they need. And so they can actually easily, quickly, one or two people can build an app to fulfill a task. And those app become searchable. So we are very much thinking about how we can actually move search from currently HTML page search to read the app and task or service search. And uh, this actually, this direction, I think clearly cannot be done by just simply one company. Even being today, we cannot simply cover all the information need. We want to think about can we actually create an ecosystem and let a lot of third party to help us to address deeply all the users' information need because they may have better context or better domain knowledge and even locally to serve a specific user segment. So I want to take everybody back to maybe 30 years ago. Maybe some of you um, still actually, you know, old enough, you actually, when you go to the library 40, 30 years ago, when you try to find a book and uh, you use the, this library card index, and at that time, library organized their book in a very simple way, right? They create inverted index. And uh, the document or the, the, the book at that time indexed by author and title and, and some of the keywords. And when you want to go to library, you come up with a few keywords. And you actually go to the inverted index and look at the, where those documents are located in the library. And uh, so today, actually the first generation of search engine was very, very much invented to replace the library card index. So the only difference, the web has a lot more document than the book in the library. So you need to have a ranking, you know, because each query, you are, you are going to actually get a lot of results, thousands and millions. So you, got, you, you need to solve this ranking problem. And the current search engine, although has been, you know, there for almost, I think more than 15 years, the paradigm has been pretty much the same without much change. The only change is we got now much, much more documents and also a rich type of document, many different type of document. And also the ranking become more sophisticated. And we need to use more powerful signals, feature vectors extracted from the document using machine learning to learn the ranking function, do uh, all kinds of log mining, data mining to extract the signal, even using human interaction to help us to improve ranking. But still, it's very much about uh, production of tabling, ranking, ranking, ranking. The paradigm has remained pretty much the same. But we are, we are actually in, entering a, a completely new era because as I mentioned, the information explosion. Now if you, you imagine only 1% of the page in your search index are going to be seen by the people. So this is just another slide to show you, you know, illustrate the idea, the web. Think about this is a very small percentage of the page actually fulfill information need. And our search engine need to discover, you know, we call this index 
um, index um, um, selection problem. Means we want to from, for example, this trillions of web page. What are those 25 billions of pages we want to index? And how do you select this portion? Because if it's not in our index, user is not going to see it. So you need to collect, uh, uh, carefully select an uh, important part of web to build your index. And uh, but think about the problem. You know, the human population is not growing as quickly as the web. And each one of us still have 24 hours per day, seven days a week, and uh, the amount of time you spend on search is still relatively limited. Okay, so this comes to a new mission. Bing and also Microsoft want to uh, push forward. And uh, the idea is really focus on user, focus on people, and really enable people to gain knowledge and also creativity from the web by first computationally understand user's search intent, then match that intent using a semantic matching indexing structure with the published content, but also the application apps and services. And uh, over time, the search engine, I think, will more and more look more like a, a routing engine, routing intent coming to this engine and to the task or the service actually users trying to accomplish can use the app to accomplish their task. So we are thinking Bing is more like a decision engine or a routing engine and very different from the traditional search engine just want to, just like a library. Even there's a book that in a hundred years only one person is going to check out, but it constantly, you know, rebuild the index to serve. Although we still need to have this part, and, but we believe there's a huge opportunity to start to shift the focus to directly thinking about what users are looking for. So in our current search engine, we start to reorganize the effort a little bit. So as you can see, traditionally, we have a, this is a core team containing three different parts. The first one is really focused on how we can build indexing. And this indexing team now also think about how we can represent, we can actually uh, store the knowledge and represent the knowledge in the way that in our index that so the query can be uh, can be directly created against this knowledge base. And the ranking now need to take care of intent. Rather than just producing a table link, looking at, looking at the keyword distribution, now intent is a very important part from the query. And we need to do a lot more query processing before the query hit our search engine. Query will come with a lot of metadata, a lot of structure, and also semantic to help us to disambiguate the user's intent. And around that, we have a user experience team to ensure that we have a whole page that produces a relevance that can help, can delight our user. And this whole page relevance also being used to actually uh, narrow down user search intent. So we call this the first page. Means when you search, this is the first page you are going to see. But if we can actually now relatively confident about user's intent, then we are going to connect, we are going to show user to the second page, which potentially show the result from our domains. Or even further, one step further, directly connect to the task and, uh, and build an ecosystem. And so means we are not the only one to, are going to build a second page. We want to leverage the developer ecosystem to help us to build that. So we need to pro provide both our first uh, uh, the, all the, our internal developers and also the ecosystem, this search platform and infrastructure, providing their data to what they need to build this. And on top of that, we are going to address different market language and also OEM, etc. So these are the basically uh, different type of page now in our Bing. And some of the pages are directly just showing still the, the generic search result. But uh, we actually had two different type of pages called domain specific result page and also domain specific task action page. Hopefully we will directly, we will be able to directly provide some of the uh, executable or the link to help people to complete tasks directly on the page. And uh, in order to do that, because a lot of no those knowledge are currently hidden inside all the web pages. So in the last couple of years, one of the important initiative in the, in the lab, particularly in MSR, is to help Bing to build this search infrastructure and start from building a storage that can constantly actually store the knowledge about 
the web we actually process. And this allows us to do deep mining. In the past, actually, our first, very first generation of search engine is more like a pipeline, a process. And we don't have like a, a memory or a, a storage that can store a lot of data, uh, metadata. And uh, the new structure, the new infrastructure we build allow us to store now the data. So we can actually deploy some of the offline mining infrastructure and allow us to actually offline loosely couple in a loosely coupled way to, to analyze the web data. And later I'm going to show you an academic search we build. It's actually based on this new type of uh, concept and infrastructure. And hopefully this infrastructure, the idea is really facilitate a lot of experiment the researchers and, and engineers want to do. Because we don't want to mess up with our production system. But a lot, in a lot of time, very, very often we need all the data, all the data search engine currently has, including the page, the metadata, and all the features currently used, being used in ranking. And allow us to actually do uh, experiments, starting from offline experiment, once we validate, and the, the hypothesis, the idea we formulate before, and then we are going to move into online experiment. And the, once the idea further, you know, further that by the real user, by the traffic, then we deploy this idea into the production system. So this infrastructure allows us to actually move the innovation uh, in a much, much uh, faster rhythm. And actually uh, prove the data, certain type of data can improve either our calling, our web calling uh, policy or, 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 or strategy, and you actually push the data, push your metadata to the crawler, your crawler become more intelligent. Or you can push your metadata to the uh, uh, processing to actually help the analysis of those web pages, or directly put, uh, push into the index, or even in the survey. And hopefully, I think the long-term goal is this infrastructure building for better mining of the web data for Bing, and uh, will become a system that we can constantly collect the web, the data from the web, store them, aggregate them, analyze them, and then organizing the information, then even present the information in the way that can support the future apps and service to take action upon. So next I want to show you a demo. And uh, so this is actually a demo, although it's a vertical, it's, an, it's not the entire general web search, but uh, it's actually a very interesting domain I think all of us really care about. It's really this academic search. And the why we believe academic search actually can be a, a first example to illustrate this new type of search engine. Because in academic search, we have a lot of different type of entities, including people, those researchers, those authors, and also those papers they, they wrote, they publish, and also the, the organization, either it's a research institute, or the university or research lab like Microsoft Research Asia. And there's a lot of conference journal. So we want to consider this as a unit of information. Rather than currently, the, the smallest, uh, smallest unit of information retrieved for retrieval is web page. Here in our new search engine is entity. And then we further extract information from the web and also from a lot of structured data we get from IEEE, from ACM, from a lot of other publishers, we get uh, the free data. And we aggregate, integrate the information. So later on you are going to see, actually we can show a profile of you. You probably, some of you already uh, play around with the academic search outside the, the room. And uh, we are, we, that page actually is automatically generated by integrating information we extract from the web. And this allows us to actually start to mine the relationship between different entities and provide a very rich environment for people to visualize, to even navigate, and even perform some sort of impact analysis. So recently, I think a lot of actually people, a professor already come to us, uh, want to actually collaborate on, on designing new type of uh, ranking algorithm to rank, for example, researchers or research institute. I know this is a very sensitive topic, but I believe by openly maybe provide all the data, now people can start to uh, deploy their customized ranking scheme. They can actually better measure the impact of our research work. And uh, so without further ado, I want to uh, invite my colleague, Zhou Xin, and to uh, show us this demo. Zhou Xin is the dev manager of academic research team in Microsoft Research Asia.
Thank yeah. you, Wayne. Yeah, I use this one. Great. Um, so good afternoon, everyone. So this is the uh, academic search um, UI. As you can see that uh, we mine and aggregate and present uh, several important entities for the uh, academic world, publication, authors, uh, conference journal, and organization. So right now, we focus on computer science and it's 24 subdomains, but we, are, we have planned to expand to multiple domains. So a typical scenario of academic search is really to search a keyword. For example, let's see um, data mining. As you can see that we, we return you the so-called 10 blue links of data mining papers, but also we can show you who are the active authors in this, in this domain, the conferences, and then the, uh, the, the journals. So uh, this gives you some much richer information so that you can, you can browse, you can uh, find related information. For example, uh, many people in the audience is probably very familiar with this conference, World Wide Web conference. And we collect the information and we can also show you the uh, popular authors here. And uh, notice that we in this one of them. And uh, uh, publications. Also, uh, we crawl the information about the next uh, the next event, which happens, um, happens next year, and we show you the, the location so that you can better prepare um, for your activity going forward. And another similar, another aspect of the user query is really looking for um, researchers. Let me just show you um, one, one example. Uh, I would I like to ask the audience question. How many of you know a researcher called Michael Cohen? Hands? Only two? All right. Uh, about 10 of them. So for example, if I, if I go to a popular search engine and search for Michael Cohen, and what we get, we get, we get something called MD Cohen and um, MF Cohen and uh, MA Cohen. And for me, as a, as a, a junior researcher, want to go into this field, uh, it probably doesn't make much sense to me. So if I, let's see, go back to here. Uh, this is the uh, academic search result. As you can see that uh, we actually, we do not treat the word microcone as a string, but rather as a, as a person, as an entity. As we, so that you can see that well, there's, there's um, micro A cohen, micro B cohen, and then all the way till X cohen. So I can see the micro cohen brothers are really active in our, in our research community. So, and then I say, oh, I actually, I'm really interested in this the Michael Cohen in Microsoft. And then you can see the nice profile of this researcher, the publication, citation, and then uh, his interest. And of course, you can also find out his homepage and all the other uh, related information. And you notice that, um, so this is not just handmade, um, tailored information, but rather it's all aggregated together. So of course, um, People, some people may find out that well, there, there's a procedural recall problem. Some of the information might not be correct, right? So uh, we provide this um, kind of a wiki style feature that you can actually provide information, provide collections. You can say, okay, I know that this person uh, changed to another organization, or I want to add more papers, add, provide PDF, or I just uh, add a by tax information. So we, uh, we can use the uh, Windows Live sign, um, service to sign in and so that you can provide accurate information. So uh, we noticed that Microcon is from Microsoft, as you can see that um, uh, we, since we know the uh, rather accurate information about the affiliation of authors to organization, so we can actually see that if you look at um, the organizations as a collection of authors, you can get their total publication count and total citation count. Also, uh, you can calculate their H index to really uh, look at the impact on a different way. Of course, you can play it around with uh, different subdomains and then uh, with different uh, years. For example, you, if you want to look at the last 10 years uh, impact of an organization, you can, uh, you can definitely do so. Um, another interesting fe uh, feature is that you can also check out the uh, co-author social network. Um, of Michael Cohen because we know all the data of 
of Michael uh, collaborate with other people so we can show you that uh, this nice graph. And then the closer a person gets to Michael, the more paper they, they, they co-author together. And then you can also drill down in to find more information um, here. And then you can also, uh, you can also see some authors from a cluster together because they themselves uh, co uh, collaborate together more. I, I'm confident that a researcher from Cornell University can find this is very helpful for their alpha beta community research, uh, hopefully, right? And uh, so um, this uh, visualization is, is very interesting and um, uh, but we, uh, we are, so for example, this is an, another um, um, social network from the author, uh, from a very uh, a famous professor in, in Japan, and this is very, um, from another professor in, in, in Korea. So uh, in here, I want to show you an example. So for example, if I want to know Professor um, Amon from, uh, from Korea, so I can just type in my name, and then I can find out the, uh, the co-author path. Like I collaborate with Frank, uh, we have just one paper. So, uh, but I know Frank, and Frank knows another person, and another person, they have a collaboration with uh, Professor, so that maybe I can figure out, okay, maybe I can get through uh, Professor uh, Main by going through this uh, um, kind of a six degree of separation hops. So this is one of the, uh, the features. So again, uh, we provide this as a, as a platform so that people can build applications. So as most, many people have seen uh, outside this meeting room, we have two uh, monitors showing one application to, uh, to show the summary information of a bunch of people. For example, we collect all the, most of the attendees to this conference, and then we show their, uh, their um, basic information, their social network, and their, uh, where they are from outside so that in this scenario that many people can just quickly look at, check out who is who um, in, in a conference setting. And, and moving forward that uh, we are not going to implement all the features uh, in the academic field, but rather we want to open this up as a platform so that people can, uh, when they have ideas about social network, about ranking, they can contact us and use our data, use our web services, and then to uh, create and then to uh, verify much more, um, uh, many, many more research ideas. So that's it. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks, Tim. So currently, this academic search is in beta, and uh, we plan to actually officially launch it next year in February. And uh, at that time, after that time, I think we are going to actually uh, look into this more collaboration by providing data and also working with community on, on really many different type of new ideas we can enrich this academic search. So on the, a little sh uh, let, let me switch the, the gear a little bit. In the multimedia content-based imagery retrieval field, I personally have been working on. I think one of the interesting directions is given uh, a lot of actually touch-based computers nowadays, uh, nowadays, people can easily actually interact uh, by drawing. And the one of the ideas, can we actually build a new type of image search, actually allow people to sketch out their search intent, so that we will be able to actually match against our database. And we believe this will actually become a very uh, useful creativity tool, or even design, design tool for kids, uh, for people actually trying to find uh, useful information from the web. But in order to do that, actually there are two technical challenges. Although I'm not going to cover the detail today, but I just want to uh, share with you what, would, what are actually the, the key technology we build. The first one is because I think the sketch from the user is very different from those shape information or the age contour we can reliably extract from the image. And uh, this will be the first technical challenge. And the second one, is how can you actually represent that information in a very scalable way and build an index that can take care of similarity search between different shapes and really perform real-time search on a very, very large database, such as billions of images. And the tomorrow in our innovation day, you are going to see the, the real demo. And the next, uh, in this, um, uh, today I'm just going to show you quickly the, the video we recorded. So for example, you can actually draw a sketch of a person. 
and if the search engine bring back, you know, from currently we have a, around like 20 million of image, and uh, in actually about like two machine. So each machine can index about 10 million images. So that's the way now we can scale up to the billions level. And for example, you search bicycle, start with some of the circle, then you continuously refine, and by adding more detail in the sketch, and you can actually uh, end up with the, the really the, the bicycle image you want. And you can potentially actually combine sketch with a keyword. And you can type a keyword and uh, draw something and uh, to help you actually, for example, when you search with uh, Sydney Opera, this is the result first. But if you want to really get very nice view of this uh, place, then you provide some additional sketch. And for example, this is starfish. And uh, you may first retrieve some of the really only the star shape. But uh, if you want to re really retrieve uh, starfish, you can provide, combine with some of the text, and you, you can really get the, 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 the desirable result you want. So this is very interactive, very natural, and we believe this can be a very public, public, uh, probably very popular app for kids, and uh, make it very fun, and uh, to really unlock their imagination and also the creativity. Okay. So I hope you will all go to see this demo uh, in tomorrow's Innovation Day. So let me quickly uh, cover the last two uh, trends I want to actually talk about. And uh, this afternoon, another talk really talk about Microsoft is all in now in this car. I think in addition to uh, the first three very important uh, direction, when we talk about cloud, talking about software as a service, platform as a service, infrastructure as a service, and uh, another new direction which is really very important is now the data, the information and knowledge will also become a very important part of the service. And it's almost like the intelligence, the, the knowledge in the cloud that we can provide to all the developer to build new type of app, even the, the app we want to actually host in our search engine. So I think the idea really open this up for ecosystem rather than compared to other search company right now is really completely focused uh, closed system we want to actually think about can we build something similar to like a query store very similar to app store but it's a query store that developer can write or even provide knowledge in whatever way they can provide to serve a particular query and uh, this query store, or you can think about it's more like a, a task. And uh, instead of just uh, one company building it, we believe if we can actually provide this infrastructure, all the metadata necessary, all the data developer need, and uh, maybe really enable them to very quickly build something that can fulfill different type of users' uh, information need. And, uh, in theory, we can have a millions or even billions of search app, and that become searchable and discoverable. And uh, the search engine can start to raw intent to task. So this is one of the overall, I think, direction that very much align with Microsoft's cloud strategy. And so as you can see here, we emphasize this ecosystem and really uh, leverage the third party to help with us. And uh, we also see really this align very well with the trend now currently on the web today. Trend has, uh, the web has been, I think, look back the history, start with really providing all the HTML web page, right? We call this really topical, the content and the document. And uh, then we see web move toward the social, really become a, uh, a platform for people to really uh, continue to stay in contact with each other, update each, 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 uh, their friends, their latest status and the, the profiles. And now we see a lot of geospatial type of service, the places and the, also the map. And the next, we believe the web is really moving to this, uh, providing really an environment for people to build all kinds of app and service, really helping people with tasks. So that's the reason now when we look at the search today, we believe in 10 years, search will be very, very different from what we see today. So uh, because of uh, the, the, the time limit, I think this is just some of the uh, more detail. Now we will, instead of just look at the keyword itself, now I think the search will provide a lot of other context to help us to understand the intent, and similar to the analogy, and also 
this is probably the, the first step to start really building a really useful personalized search because potentially those a lot of knowledge and even the, the task can be running locally. In the future, we can possibly provide a query store that actually captures some of the user's information need locally because they know they will, every day they want to keep track certain important topic and they want to constantly uh, analyzing the web for certain important trend they want to continue follow. So those may be more uh, sensitive related to privacy information can be run locally. And uh, so this is also one of the direction. So the goal is really make search actionable. Okay, so by doing this, we have the opportunity now to really start thinking about how we can reorganize the web. Instead of just HTML page, now website, and uh, really about task. And, uh, and also bring user a coherent, seamless experience when they are using different type of device, whether or not it's a PC, phone, or TV. So to really quickly conclude, and uh, in Microsoft, we are actually trying to see what search is moving toward, the new direction, the potential disruption we can actually look into. Because if we just simply follow the current trend, we will not be able to leave from. And so here is a few ideas and direction we are looking at. And uh, so moving from organizing the, just simply focusing on all the information and the end result is 10 boolean. We want to start directly, I mean directly address users' information need. This is really a user-centric innovation. And if we can actually know users' information need, either you provide answers or tasks. But this really requires us to better, deeply understand the query space and also extract knowledge from the document and organizing the knowledge in a way that can help us to actually fulfill users' uh, information need. And instead of just searching content, now we organize the information at the entity level and also providing really a, a capability in the future to search apps and services. Moving away from keyword matching to understand intent, using of course a lot of uh, more sophisticated technology such as natural language computing and looking to the user's context and history to help us and uh, to serve user better. And this is how we move away from current simply just a search to a decision engine and also Currently, the search very much, I think, look at the index of the, the, the archive web, means the page already been there. But the more and more the web really become a, a platform for a lot of real-time data, since like uh, the data from Twitter, I think will become very important part of the web and the search engine also need to be able to handle this real-time data better and really also leverage the hardware and uh, really provide open ecosystem to help, help us to build the next generation search and uh, with this, actually, we also believe it's very possible to uh, disrupt current advertising uh, business because currently, very, the search ads is very much impression-based. And people see a link, they click, and uh, the search engine will charge. With this deeply integrated task, potentially, we can actually do transaction-based advertising because by deeply understanding user intent and uh, really help user complete what, whatever they are trying to do, either it's uh, booking a ticket, a, uh, arranging a travel, or buying a, a product, and it's actually a very natural less mile to really charge a user. And this potentially can revolutionize the current advertising business as well. And uh, with the cloud, I think today very much the search has been focused on information cloud here, but social cloud, the emergence of social data, a lot of signal we can potentially extract to further improve our search, communication cloud, entertainment cloud, and even the productivity cloud, commerce cloud. So thinking about the web is now really very different from it was many, many, many years ago. And uh, there's a lot of new opportunity we can actually look into to move the search uh, to the next level. OK, so we slept. Uh, I want to conclude my talk here. So here is a few very important trends. I hope uh, this information is useful for you to think about the new research problem in search because this really opened up a lot of new problems. Today, we don't even have all the solution. So I'm not, today, I'm not, actually, I'm not telling you that we have done all the work, but I uh, just want to present you 
a lot of new opportunity that in the next decade, actually we can completely change what search is and really help users to you know, find all the knowledge they need to complete their task. Thank you very much.